Hello and welcome to the Nishwarda YouTube podcast series. Once again, powered by openbusinesscouncil.org and citiesabc.com. As usual, we continue profiling personalities and doers, influencers and radical thinkers and doers especially that are changing the way we look at business and technology and with their creativity, with their, I would say, diligence and persistence, create their brands, create their businesses, and take things forward. One of the things we've been trying to do in this series is portraying all the areas of the business ABCs, and at the end of the day, all of us have to deal with, deal with technology, deal with relationships, deal with business in windows, and especially how we actually get our energies together to create great projects, especially in a time where technology is so disruptive and so uh, as well blurred because the... It's not black and white. Things are becoming much more complex than ever. So in this series, we interview around 300 people worldwide from billionaires and ministers to influencers and personalities from different areas. And today we're going to be touching again, I think from one of the first times, one area that is very important for me, that is search engine optimization or organic search, and as well, all the areas of digital marketing that are key and more important than ever for making a business, especially in the time in the time of AI. And uh, I'm very excited to welcome to our series, Matt Diamond, that is the head of marketing at Atoni, and uh, as well, uh, a personality in the industry. So Matt Diamond is a seasonal digital marketing um, who currently serves as the founder at Atoni, a digital marketing agency specializing in a range of online strategies. And these strategies encompass uh, the areas of Web360, design, SEO, which is search engine optimization for the ones still not familiar, <laughs> social media, advertisement, email marketing, and various other digital techniques aimed at helping business achieve growth, digital, footprint, and of course, sales. Etoni is quite original, and that's why I was excited about profiling uh, Matt, because I found it through social media, and I found a lot of education, very concrete videos about growth hacking, about taking things forward. And I think it's very important to look at these topics, because I think with, with AI, everyone is kind of blurred, okay, everything is AI, but there's a lot of work behind the plumbing of technology and search engines. So Etoni portfolio includes successful collaborations with renowned brands such as Labatt and Heiser Bauch. The Bush, I probably am spelling it wrong, <laughs> and probably in, in, in the um, brewing industry, and Nivea, of course, that everyone knows in the care sector. And uh, they've been working as well, well known uh, sun care brands like Coppertone and some, among others. The agency has as well a, a very interesting uh, work between the area of consumer acquisition through search engine optimization, search engine marketing, uh, that of course includes pay per click, Google AdWords, and all these different things, but as well. A lot of things that is handling projects of diverse sizes and as well integrating all the different areas of online marketing. And the, one of the things as well, they're very um, uh, powerful is in education, offering education courses for free, like the latest free course, Understanding SEO, which I think it's very important for everyone listening to us. And before, of course, his tenure at Atoni, Matt held the, the position of Elder of, Glo of Digital Operations at the Blade Zebra an online lifestyle magazine that reaches pinnacle with an impressive 4 million page views and a lot of different things. So Atoni, of course, is still a, a, a new agency that I'm excited as well to profile new players in the market. And uh, the profile of Matt includes um, a degree in advertisement and marketing communications from St. Clair College. And his skills, including, of course, all the areas of digital marketing, but as well, a lot of things that integrated marketing, WordPress and web design. And uh, one of the things he's been working is how we can actually push uh, digital marketing. And of course, he has a huge um, follower on social media where he actually pushes all these areas. So welcome to our series, uh, Matt. It's a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I don't need to say anything. You just said my entire story, everything about me. Uh, I think I'm just going to hang up and then, you know, that's that's the podcast. <laughs> no, no, but it's no, great. No. Thank you so much for having me. This is awesome. No, fantastic. So, so Matt, so um, you are uh, come, uh, joining us from Canada, uh, yep. which is a great country. And of course, very strong digital powerhouse as well. There's a lot of digital experts over there. And of course, he created a lot of uh, global powerhouse stars. Uh, yeah. It's like, interesting. Some pop stars came actually from case studies of SEO and the growth hacking, which is important as well for a lot of the industries. So well, even Shopify, Shopify is a Canadian exactly. company and it's like it's 
the biggest online e-commerce platform. I don't know. Is it the biggest? I'm not sure, but it's yeah, like definitely up it there. <laughs> yeah. In terms of e-commerce, I think it's the biggest in the yeah. world. Well, if you exclude probably Alibaba, but Alibaba is a slightly different yeah, of e-commerce course. part. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, fantastic. So Matt, tell us a bit about your background. Um, uh, of course, uh, how did you end up actually creating and involved in creating your own agency? As well, wow. how did you found SEO? And as well, you are a more young generation from SEO. So I would like to see yeah. how you see as well that that coming to the industry at this probably third wave of SEO. I would say further. Yeah. We'll talk about that further. I firstly want to say I wish I was born sooner so that I could have taken advantage of how easy SEO used to be, just keyword stuffing, you know, adding meta keywords and stuff like that. That would have been a really good time to be an SEO expert. Uh but yeah, anyway, so I got my start. Actually, um, as you mentioned, I did go to school for advertising and marketing communications management at St. Clair College, which essentially preps you to be an account person. It shows you a little part of every you know piece of the industry from building a website using HTML to um, using Photoshop. Sorry, I can't think today. Using Photoshop and Illustrator to uh, edit images and design stuff. And then one of the things that we had, or one of the course that we had was SEO. And I was like, oh, this stuff is really interesting because it kind of combines website design and like the back end of it with SEO um, and getting traffic to your website for free from Google. And all you have to do is like add these tags, write good content, all this kind of stuff. So anyways, um, I was really like not in love with it, but like I really like fell for it. Um, and my teacher there or my professor, he did this one assignment that it was like, you have to create a website. And this was like for your final grade. Um, and we had the whole semester do it. You have to create a 10 page website um, through HTML, like using HTML and then do all the SEO stuff. Make sure you had your Google Analytics tag and Google Search Console, all that stuff set up. And I created a website um, called Windsor Re- Windsor Restaurant Reviews, and it's no longer up. So if somebody's trying to go there, it's not it's not up. I had to take it down, and I'll explain why in a minute. So I created this site, Windsor Restaurant Reviews, and the project called for you know do a ten page website. My website ended up being like five or six hundred pages. And the reason why it should have only been a 10 page website is because the requirement to submit your assignment was you had to print out every page and tell like the professor what you did, explain how you optimize that page. So I built five, 600 pages and I had to just make summaries like, you know, these pages, here's how I optimize all these pages. Here's how I optimize all these. So I ended up submitting like, a, it looked like a stack of paper that you would just like open the actual, you know, when you open it before you put it in the printer, like that's how thick it was just like this giant thing. Um, and I wish I had AI at the time to write all that stuff. So what I did is I grabbed reviews from you know a bunch of restaurants that already had reviews and i edited out keywords or i edited out like you know a word like spaghetti or um, sushi or whatever it was or like this blank restaurant so replace blank with italian or caribbean or you know french or whatever it might be replace that and i had to manually go in and do like the find and replace on like 600 pages um and anyways long story short I submitted it. I ended up getting like, I think it was like a hundred percent on the assignment. He offered me a summer job at his SEO company where I was doing SEO and I got to learn more about SEO and using WordPress and all that kind of stuff. And from there, I just like, I started getting phone calls and emails from that site because I forgot about it after I graduated. And people were like, we don't serve sushi. We are an Italian restaurant. Why is somebody leaving a review for us on your site? And I was like, oh, like I need to, I need to take that down. Um, and it was just like, a, and it was an assignment. I put it up and left it and, you know, it was just there. So that's where I really got my first taste of SEO. And then I also, while I was still in school, I got my first client and it's the only cold call I've ever actually done. Cause I was like, I want to see if this thing works. I saw a bin rental company and I know I'm like really elaborating on your question here. Um, and if you want me to shut up, you just tell me and I will stop talking. No, 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 continue. This is the stories. This is the <laughs> um, stories that make a business. And a <laughs> um, so on my way to school one day, I saw this like bright green bin, like a dumpster bin that you would pull up to your house when you're doing renovations or construction. And uh, I noticed that they didn't have a website. 
So I gave them a call and I was like, Hey, you know, I'm a student at St. Clair college, you know, I could do uh, build you a website and do um, search engine optimization for very cheap. And of course I had to explain what that was. And back then it's just, you know, showing up on Google, I can help you show up on Google. And, you know, they probably got calls like that all the time, but turns out they knew like people in my family already. So they're like, okay, we can trust this guy. Anyways, they were like, well, you know, we're not looking for anything right now. They give me a call about three weeks later and the guy's like, oh, my wife says we really need to hire you. I don't know if they talked to somebody that knew me or whatever, but my wife says we really need to hire you. I charge them 500 bucks to do the website and SEO and their business grew exponentially. They ranked, and I haven't looked at their website in years, but they ranked number one for like 150, 200 keywords. And all I did was on-page SEO. I didn't even know anything about off-page SEO. Um, So the power is just... Yeah, it's just crazy. Just uh, like writing good content and writing helpful content. Yeah, amazing. So that's that's a great story and as well, and it shows as well the magic of action and the magic of SEO as well. And so, from your, that passion from school to your experience, how did you end up actually creating your agency and as well to build uh, your your career on the industry and how did you start like you said you were not in the first generation of SEO and by yeah. the way for people listening to us I'm probably in the second <laughs> industry but I'm a bit older than you but uh it's between the first and the second because in the other day the it was always difficult okay remember for people listening to us and if you go for a bit a brief history of SEO for the geeks like me uh companies like Forbes were banned by Google I remember that in 2000 this was only 12, 14, 15 years ago. If you search for Forbes, you would appear. Forbes website is doing illicit activities and therefore was banned by Google. Oh, wow. I didn't this even know would that. Appear, I remember I should have wow. screenshot it and keep it because people have slow memory. And for his companies, like I'm not mentioned, but one of the biggest companies, uh, car companies in the world was banned from Google. So Crazy. because they had the agencies, they were, like you said, <laughs> too much aggressive techniques. So. Let's look a bit about your history with SEO and how do you end up actually building your career and your agency? Yeah, so nice I need to said, tell. Yeah, yeah so I need to good. tell you a little bit um, of, of unrelated things related to the story. It'll all make sense as I go through, but it really helped me, um, you know, make build the agency and build the kind of culture that I really wanted. So. Um, let me go all the way back. So I graduate school. I get a couple of internships in Toronto. I hate working at a big agency so much. I quit the industry. I go work in film, like on a film set. Um, I think I was like the assist, the third assistant director or something like that, where I was like working in the office, making sure stuff was getting done. And I was like, oh, I really like this. So I ended up working on like indie films and short films, like driving around a truck or whatever it might be. And it was really sparse. So during that time, I still always had an SEO client or two kind of going. But, uh, you know, back then I was maybe charging them like 200 bucks a month, 300 bucks a month to do like on page optimization, whatever it was. It was not enough money to live. So I was doing all this, like, you know, driving trucks and, you know, going to set and all this kind of stuff. And one of the things that I really realized during that time is one, People don't like to pay invoices, especially when they can't really see the work that you're doing, which is often the case with SEO. So I'll get into, you know, what we do now to show people that we're doing work to show our clients that we're actually doing things. And it's not just this magical, you know, thing that's happening. Um, But while I was driving that truck uh, for an indie film, I I was driving for 14 hours a day and they had like no budget and they're paying me $50 a day. Pretty sure that's like illegal to pay somebody that little and i was driving the biggest possible truck that i could drive like with my like standard g license i don't know what you guys have over there but the g license is like you can drive you know a regular vehicle i was driving this massive truck like a five ton truck or whatever whatever it was and they didn't want to pay me i worked like three or four days in a row and they didn't want to pay me and i kept emailing 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 the producer whatever and they were like oh you know it's in the mail it's in the mail and like after a month i was like i can't, I need to eat i don't have any money 
So I was like, if you don't think I'm worth the, you know, 200 bucks that you owe me for four 12 hour days of work, you know, let me know. And, uh, just, that'll be fine. You don't need to pay me. Just admit it. And he's like, come pick up the check at my house. So anyways, I pick up the check and that pattern kept happening with clients. So even after that, I quit doing that because I'm like, this isn't sustainable. It doesn't make sense. I'm good at SEO. I'm good at all that stuff. Even after that, like chasing the payments was something I was always like, this is brutal. Like I never want to do this to somebody else. So one of the things with my business and like, I'm jumping all over the place right now. One of the things when I started my business, I was like, I am not going to hire anybody else until I can pay until I sorry, until I have three months worth of their salary saved up because clients take time to pay sometimes. And just because they're not paying me doesn't mean I can't pay, you know, an employer or freelancer or whatever it is. So that's part of, and I know that's like very standard business stuff, but you'd be surprised at how many people out there who are just like delaying, delaying, delaying. And then you're like, well, I can't pay my guys. And then that's your problem. You have to go to the bank. It's a whole thing. Um, but part of that. So in, in 2014, and this sounds like it's a long period of time. This was like six months, um, you know, working in film and doing all that stuff after that. Um, well, actually, sorry, while I was working in film, I met up with this guy who was running this publication. Um, and it wasn't like a big thing. It was just like a very local small publication. And I go in and I pitch him like, I want $450 a week to, um, do SEO and to do your marketing and to do all this kind of stuff. And they really want to work with me. Um, and they were like, that's just too much money. We don't have that amount of money. I'm like, how much do you have? They're like 150 bucks. And I was like, you got yourself a deal. It's more money than I'm making right now. So I ended up, uh, just taking that deal. And from there, we, um, a couple of us, uh, they, they had like a staff of, uh, like other writers and stuff like that. We did a whole pitch. We didn't even talk to them about this before, like the, the investors of that publication. And we were like, Hey, can you guys give us money? We want to do this other publication. That's going to be successful for X, Y, and Z reasons. And, um, they said, yes. And we are like, Oh, okay. <laughs> like, I guess we got to do this now. Um, and we started a publication called the plaid zebra. Um, and, uh, yeah, at a certain point we were getting 4 million, actually six months in, we were getting 4 million website visitors per month. And, uh, yeah, we didn't know what to do. The server crashed. I had no idea. Like I was the head of digital. Like I built the website. I signed up with the hosting company. I did all that stuff. And I was not prepared for the servers to crash or like the Google ads we had on the website, like they weren't optimized properly. So we lost a ton of money doing that. And I'm just like, shit, like if I know now what I knew then, like I would be rich. You know what I mean? Um, so anyways, I did that whole publication. We had like a bunch of different shareholders in the company, most of which worked there. And uh, it was a disaster to say the least. Um, and I was like, I will never have another partner again. Uh, besides my wife, my wife is amazing. She's not my business partner. She's just my life partner. Um, but I, I will never have another business partner again because I want to make the decisions. And usually the decisions that I want to make or I, I don't want to say this, but the right ones. Um, so anyways, uh, the, a long story short, after that publication kind of wrapped up, and I believe that was like end of 2015, 2016, I got like a, a six week contract, like fill in for somebody between uh, jobs at a, at a big advertising agency. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to try this again. You know, it's been a couple of years since I've been at a bigger agency. I'm just going to try it. My third day there, I was like, I need to get out of here. I booked a two month trip for like after those six weeks and I took off. I went to California for a month, went out West into the mountains for a month. And then I came back and I was like, cool, what am I going to do now? Like I need, I need to figure out what I'm going to do. I ended up getting um, a client while I was out in California and that kind of started, you know, me on my path to growing an agency, which I will say kind of happened by accident. I just ended up having too many clients that I was working with. And I was like, I need to hire somebody. And going back to what I was saying, I needed three months worth of their payroll before I would hire anybody. So I was like working 12, 14 hours a day, like for like, it felt like years and it probably was years, but, um, 
went through that whole process, finally hired somebody. And then I was like, like, that's a lot of money to pay somebody to help me with a job that I could do myself. But then I'm like, oh, I have the hours. Okay, cool. Um, and then speed up until today. So some of the things, some of the lessons that I learned from all of that were one, I never want to pay anybody late. If a freelancer sends me an invoice, they get paid as soon as I see it. Um, if like my staff, you know, I pay them every uh, two weeks, they get paid on time every single time. There's never a delay. There's never money missing. There's never anything like, I'm going to pay you later. There's no promise of anything like that. Like, that's one thing that I learned. Another thing is like, you need to treat everybody with respect, whether they're working under you, which I don't think, I don't consider any of my staff working under me. We all work together on, you know, on our clients working towards the same goal. Um, and then, um, working a work-life balance is something that everybody absolutely needs so right now for the last like three almost three years we've been on maybe two years i'm not going to push it i'll say two years uh we've been on four day work weeks i work every single day because i'm a business owner and there's ups and downs like sometimes i'm working five six seven ten hours a day other times i'm like cool like it's you know not even lunchtime and i've got nothing to do for the rest of the day um, don't tell my clients that, but, um, yeah, so it's like, there's the ups and downs, but my staff works four days a week, um, except when they're training, they work five days a week so that they can catch up quicker. And then after the couple months, they go down to four days a week. So it's, I, I really believe in like the whole work-life balance, uh, thing. For people listening to us, and one of the things I try to portray it in this series is precisely the stories of all of us, because we learn a lot. And like you said, this small experience and thank you for sharing uh Amboli, your your experience because this is what makes any business okay from from uh, uh and whatever you are an influencer or a global expert you start somewhere and that's why yeah. i like to go on this background because we we all learn massive um and we need this as well i think to first of all to demystify our own challenges and second to, to yes support. so then tell us about uh, a tony so you created, you touched about it, but you didn't explain yep. how it works, what is your uniqueness, and as well your work as an influencer. How do you start working on that and the educational work? Um, firstly, I think you're the first person to ever call me an influencer, which is thank you, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to take that. That's great. Um, I really just I'm just a digital marketer and I want to help as many small businesses as possible. And I say small businesses because there's so many of them and they're getting taken advantage of by SEO agencies, by website designers by you know even softwares that guarantee they'll do their seo or they'll, they'll make them more money and all these small business owners are getting taken advantage of over and over and over again so my goal as like the quote unquote influencer side of things and like the education side of things is like i want you to know the basics of seo so that if you are working with an agency you can go in and see if they're even doing any of the core stuff that needs to be done, like updating a title tag or meta description, um, or even using heading one tags. Like you'd be surprised at how often I talk to somebody and they're like, yeah, we've been working with an agency for seven months, eight months. And then I'm like, what are they doing? You're not, your rankings are going down. Your traffic is going down. Like what, what's supposed to be happening here? Um, so with my agency, with Hey Tony, I, want to genuinely help businesses um i like obviously i'm in it to make money of course but if i can do that well helping somebody else make money and not scamming them and helping them educate themselves and like like somebody just contacted me recently and was like hey i want to do like your premium package for seo uh can we do that uh for six months or whatever but if we do sign up for that can you train my staff how to do seo so we can eventually do it ourselves and i'm like yeah absolutely like you can do it yourself after the six months you can learn everything you need to learn during those six months go do it yourself i'm not trying to lock people in hold the keys to the castle whatever you want to call it and lock them out of their own website of their own seo like i want to be as transparent as possible with like clients not clients whatever um yeah that's like that's about the business i don't know what else, i don't know what else you want to know but that's kind of like the the thought behind it just help as many people as possible no no i appreciate it and, and i think that's the way so so let's look at right now in terms of um the way you see seo like we discussed there's different layers of seo there's the layers of uh how you 
like you said, the first stage of SEO, the second, and now we are in a an interesting stage of the internet as a usual. So that's not just yeah. SEO, it's about digital marketing and how we take this. Of course, for SEO gigs is a very specific part and is a big important thing. But one of the things I've been finding out is definitely these nuances, whatever you are, Facebook or Google or even OpenAI, you still need SEO or Tesla. Yeah. You need to optimize for your keywords. You need to optimize for your website. And if you don't search, if you don't be on searches, if your cars or your brands or whatever doesn't appear, you you have a problem. So yeah. how do you see, first of all, SEO nowadays? And um, and what would be the, the present challenge that we see in terms of the industry, especially with, the, with AI taking over? Yeah. So how do I see SEO now? Like, I guess, what is SEO? Like what works right now? Helpful content. And I know Google just released their helpful content update, like not too long ago. It's really true. Like none of the, our client websites that we've been working on for, you know, a month or six months or a year, none of them got hit by that algorithm update because we're writing helpful, useful content for us, for our clients um, there's not one piece of content that we publish that isn't going to help the user. And that's what I say to my staff as well. Like everything that we're doing, the goal, the point of writing this article or optimizing this page is to help somebody looking for this information, find the answer that they're looking for. That is SEO. That's literally it. If somebody's looking for a product, we want to help people find the product that they're looking for. And most of the time it happens to be our product. Right. Um, but that's, that's basically it. And that's, I'm talking about on-page stuff, which I'm not sure if anybody listening or everybody listening is well versed in SEO, but on-page is just, that just means content that you can edit on your own website. You have full control over that content. So that's what on-page SEO means. But yeah, so writing helpful content is a huge part of it, but you need the backlinks too. So you got to get backlinks to the website, to some of that content, um, because you know any good resource is going to have people linking to it. So if you don't have any links, you could write the best content in the world. It's not necessarily going to boost you up on Google. Um, and with a lot of the AI content that's coming out, like we use AI on almost every single blog post that we write, but it's not only AI. We go through, we edit it, we add more copy. We make obviously make sure it sounds good. We add in more expertise. We add in the experience as well. Um, you know, all that stuff. And that's like, it, I say SEO is easy. It's content and backlinks. That's basically and, it. So, so you touch content, and and uh, in the end of the day, um, I want to touch this in particular because it's one of the things that I think it, it it needs much more discussion. So, there's a lot of great content, okay, but a lot of the great content that exists has terrible uh, rankings. Okay, Google is not doing very good work to index good content. Yeah. let's put it that way. It can index good content if it's more in the areas that Google is trying to make money in Google AdWords, which is the paradox. Of course. Um, but but in the end of the day, it's not so easy to index content. Okay. Of course, if you are doing something in medium or if you're doing soon something, but you can do for one part or the other. But the challenge here is partly, like you said, okay, you can have the best content. Like they say, good content is one thing. But having good optimization or good syndication, or yeah. I would say that the, they said content is king in SEO, but in the end of the day, the the real king is the capacity to distribute this content and index it with links, uh, like you said. So yeah, in a time, uh, I, I want this is a big question, but I think we 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 can put our <laughs> hit, uh, our, our geek uh, hat right now, and I think it's important for my audience, and especially for all the teams that are here working or looking at SEO, because of course SEO is uh, for people listening to us and of course uh, Matt touched this um, is the process that you put for ranking for your company to ranking for your content for your article for your brand even for you personal for instance if you have a name that has like 10 20 people with the same name you have to rank because otherwise you're going to be diluted and no you just change just change your name choose a different name what are you doing <laughs> that's what i would tell these, people right <laughs> these details are very important but but sometimes yeah. it's not so easy for instance i'm giving an example for people listening to us and i think it's a very crazy example two examples actually uh one of the person actually uh, uh i've been working with the person actually with two people so one of them is a personality of financial industry that had this name not conventional uh because it's not uh, is is british born uh, british born but is actually uh, from africa and when 
<laughs> and for instance, I, I remember I met him and he was very high profile financial organization. And the first thing I would search for him, he would appear a guy that was that killed a couple of people in Africa. And he was what appeared in search engine. So that means, did you ever search for your name in Google? And I'm talking a very high profile person building relationships and working with banks yeah. and financial institutions. And the other one is even more crazy. Pure British Anglo-Saxon name, like your Matt and stuff like that, very yeah. high profile. And then there was another person with the same name in the US that as well killed some people. In his case, it was even worse because, Jeez. of course, if you search for him, and he's a person in the digital world, the other one was in the financial world, he, he got into the United States and was taken to interrogation. Wow. So the guy okay. worked actually with people like Bill Gates. So I'm not talking someone small. Yeah. But yeah this yeah. is just to say that, that, uh, it's not so black and white. And I think especially right now with ChatGPT, if you search for some names, they don't exist. ChatGPT doesn't know sure. about them. Yeah. So uh, I want to touch this from this angle. Let's reverse engineer because, of course, you are a geek. I am a geek. And, of course, even in my case of a geek, I did all the mistakes sometimes from my own websites. <laughs> oh, so oh, I just want to yeah. touch that. How do you see this, this complexity right now? Sorry, in terms of... Like so, how, how do you see the 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 indexing of content by Google, and as well because now we have Google, we have Bard, we have ChatGPT, uh, mm -hmm. we have as well Bing integrating uh, OpenAI. So the search is becoming, and for instance, Google for some personalities creates like for me creates like a this box of author yep. and profiles, but for most of the people, Google doesn't care less. Uh, uh, so so the search is still very very difficult, and and for instance. If you are a mainstream brand like some of the brands you work or even some of the people i interview yeah. of course the name the search appear but if you are not so you touch the very important thing for instance searching for a name you change the name if you, because you cannot compete yeah. with like someone that has like a super name uh yeah. but it's not so black and white some people don't know this and most of the, another thing as well that i uh, this sorry i want to touch these elements is most of i've been teaching in business schools especially in digital yeah and um, i think probably in 10 years of teaching i didn't find almost anyone that understand digital. And I was perplexed how my students studying digital and I like your like you were yeah. asked by your teachers to do stuff. It it was a struggle. I had to fight with them to become digital. So so it's Jeez. these kind of details that are really important for everyone listening to us. Whatever you're working for a bank, whatever you're working for your own stuff. And of course if you have if you want to be an influencer, definitely you need yeah. to know about working SEO. But let, let's look at the content in particular. How do you index content in a simple way, because it's not so black and white, and Google has only sent ten results. So, in order to get your content index, you have to to make a lot of effort. So, it's it's actually like you're making it sound complicated. It is not, and I will tell you exactly what you need to do. Type in the keyword that you want to rank for, right? Whether people are using that keyword or not, that we'll just leave that aside. Type in the keyword on Google that you want to rank for. Look at the top three search results write better content than they have if it's like like we've done seo for like the biggest bank in canada and all we had to do was go and look at the top search results see and like they already have like high domain authority they're a very trustworthy website look at the top three search results see how many times they're using a specific keyword on that page um see if they are getting backlinks to that page or internal links if they're what words they're using on the page um and that will that help them rank higher um, when we're looking at writing content for our clients, and now it's probably going to be more competitive after a bunch of people listen to this, um, but essentially just look at the top three search results and write better content. Like take all three of those articles, all three of those pages and look at what their heading one tags are, their heading two tags, how many words are on the page, how many times, like what are the keywords that they're using? What are the instances? Are they doing inter any internal linking? Are they getting internal links to that page? Like just do it better than them. And I know that sounds easy to say because it is, you can use ChatGPT to like write you an outline of those pages and then you just make your own new content. And obviously you need to know what you're talking about. Um, so go through and edit it, make sure it's accurate, fact check add some links, internal links, external links, and all that stuff. It's not difficult. Well, you made it sound very <laughs> easy, but, but it's, I, I, I can do a small exercise with you. I, I've been, so let's do a small exercise about yeah, let's do it. research for a couple of high profile personalities. 
uh, with some, I'm not talking for instance, Bill Gates or the, all these like yeah. premium tier personalities. If you search, for instance, the even personalities in SEO industry or yeah. personalities in blockchain industry or metaverse, whatever the stuff, they really have terrible digital presence. Okay. With yeah. some exceptions. And I'm talking sometimes big influencers. I, I sometimes I'm doing lists because I'm in top lists of, for instance, this week I was top list of blockchain and metaverse in the world. Amazing. I did some lists. But the point is that then I try to see the top 20. I have to do like sometimes five searches to find the digital. Uh, li- and this is yeah. sometimes in platforms where actually they have the links. Otherwise, it would be even more difficult. So the, like what you said, the, the content indexation is about replicating what other websites do. And for us, if you look at even Facebook, they hire very high profile people. Uh, and there's a couple of videos you can find the history of Facebook. They hired a couple of experts in SEO to start ranking for the universities for the personalities. And as well, the end of the day was that. And then, of course, the links back from Facebook, because in the end of the day, every website linking to Facebook is giving links to them. So this is not the yeah. black and white thing, but at the same time, it is black and white. Um, yes. And at the same time, it has a huge level of technical knowledge. For instance, what you just said, for me, to you is quite straightforward, but yeah. uh, for someone that is not uh, doing this, for instance, an example that I, I use all the time is VCs. And for instance, even public companies, for instance, uh, we build Open Business Council. So, and the idea was to create a digital profile for businesses and personalities that are yeah. certified. So that means it can only be one Matt, one Dinesh, one whatever. And for instance, in, there's only 54,000 companies in the world that are public companies. That's oh. 400 million micro SMEs. And if you search for most of these companies, their digital presence is a disaster. Oh, yeah. You cannot have, for instance, in the case of, and I'm doing this myself, sometimes I want to engage with personalities. I want to know at about us page, they have three lines, one line. Sometimes they forget about it. So it's this kind of exercise that I, I that's why I'm talking because this is a big challenge with the world economy because, and and, some, and of course, for instance, I only was involved, unfortunately, in a, in a scam incident with myself. And mm-hmm. I did an entire understanding why these people came to me and they pretend to be investors. And then I I work in the search these people are still in LinkedIn listed. Yeah. And they don't exist. They have fake personalities. So for personalities, um, I don't know that it's super important to try to rank for anything else than your name. And like for years, I like I made sure that I had no pictures on Google images of me because I was just like, I want to see if I can do this, all this kind of stuff. And so there's a way to prevent people from finding you. There's also a way to make sure that people, when you, when somebody searches your name, that you come up for a bunch of stuff. Um, one of the ways, obviously, is having a website with your name, your bio, all that kind of stuff on it. Um, and maybe you have a personal blog, whatever it might be. Another way is to have your social media handles be your name, go on podcasts, write uh, articles for other publications, all that kind of stuff that all builds your profile um as a person and will help you per, like for a personal brand rank um so when we're talking about just seo as a whole like how important is it for a business like if you don't know like i'll just give you an example from my real life we are redoing our like fireplace area we're doing an accent wall with stone and like we have shelves that we're getting built and stuff we don't know anybody who does any of that. So we have two options. Ask friends if they know anybody who you know is reputable that can do that stuff. And for one of those projects, we found somebody that we knew. The other option is to go on Google and type in stone mason in your city, whatever it is. So we that's what we did. And how do you find how do you know if somebody's good? They have Google reviews, right? They have their reputation there. The people who are showing up at the top. I know because I do, you know, search engine optimization and I help people get higher up on Google. I know that those can be manufactured. So I don't only look at the top three. I look at like, you know, four, five, six, and maybe sometimes on page two because I want the best company. I don't want the best optimized company. Right. So SEO is really great. And kind of what I just said there, you can get a good optimized company that's not the best company for you. They're just doing everything right. And it's, it's a little bit of a gray area for me because for me, I want my clients 
that we're working with who are doing good jobs. I want them to rank higher. And if a company that's ranking number one does a shitty job and they're ranking number one because they filter out all their negative reviews, which that's very easy to do as well, um, then that's just like it looks bad because they're not getting any bad reviews. All five star, five star, five star. Um, but yeah, anyways, back to what I was saying. If people don't know somebody already, they're not looking through a phone book anymore. They're going onto Google and they're searching for the product or service that they want. So let, let's look at right now. And uh, of course, I'm going a bit technical, but I think it's important because I, this sure. is an interview. I think the people that will choose probably will see your title and they will look at this as well. So <laughs> uh, when it looks at, uh, so the, the most important thing for digital, of course, is the, the capacity to, like you said, links. Okay, links yeah. is the, so it's the process of link building. That is the process of creating links to a website. So putting all the websites, having articles that link back to you or PR that actually create authority to drive traffic and drive uh, drive information to your website. Yeah. Of course, if you are a global brand, you'll have these ring links naturally, but there's like thousands of websites leaking back to you. So yeah. how do you see the process of link building when it comes right now that, so for instance, uh, if you look at the top websites in the world, we have to see that, of course, Google is number one. Uh, and, uh, and of course, within the top, uh, uh, top 100, there's one, uh, there's, if it, I think there's a, at the moment 1.2 million uh, billion websites in the world, uh, yeah. and uh, I want to just touch this. And I think it's part of education. You, you like education, so if you yeah. look at the, the top 100 websites in the world, and depends of the if you look at similar web or if you look at visual capitalists yeah. of the the stuff, you have from some some rankings is for instance google ironically puts this the, not number one puts wikipedia <laughs> from sources of across course. the web but wikipedia in terms of traffic i think is number five or seven and then you have of course uh google facebook uh yahoo twitter is is i think it dropped a lot but it's been between yeah. five to seven and you have a lot of different things but by similar web there is a, a ranking of of traffic number one is google number two is youtube number three facebook Number four is Instagram. Number five, Twitter is still Twitter, although uh, it it seems X. like you lost a lot of stuff. Yeah, so now X. it's X. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then you have Baidu, Wikipedia. Number seven, uh, number eight, Yahoo, and number nine, Yandex. That is a search engine for Russia, and WhatsApp. Number ten, and then it starts uh, some porno websites. But let's take that. So let's of course, that. yeah, yeah. Oh, so I think we should talk more about those websites. If you if we yeah. could just pull them up. No, I'm just, I'm just joking. <laughs> if you want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, um, but they support so, SEO as well. But so, so something that I find really, really interesting on what you're talking about. We're talking about like some of the biggest websites in the world. Um, and what we say for our clients is like, I don't want to compete, and uh, those are obviously like the, the biggest of the biggest. I don't want to compete with the other websites in our industry that are like the big players. I don't want to go after the same keywords as them. I want to go after secondary keywords or keyword like longer. Um, why can't I talk long tail keywords, which is just like a longer strung together, um, you know, search query. Those are the kind of keywords we want to go after. So back to what you were saying about getting backlinks and credibility and all this stuff, you need a lot less credibility and a lot fewer backlinks to actually start ranking for those terms that the big players don't want to go. They might go for buy product category product name here but if you go buy pro blue product category um you know with certain you know other variables in there um you can rank for that and you can actually see if people are looking that up so you don't need as many links and you don't need all the credibility that the big player has and even if the big player notices that you are starting to rank for these keywords they're not going to care because it's going to have such a low search volume compared to all their other stuff that they're like, why would we spend all this time and effort to like crush this little website when we're already ranking for all the big stuff? And then when they're not looking, you come after the big stuff. <laughs> I agree. Of course, it depends a lot of your ambition and what you try to do. But looking yeah. at these websites, the reason I mentioned as well is these websites are the websites that drive traffic to other websites. Yes. Um, yes. So, so just coming back to link building, because I, I want to touch this, because I don't think most of the people understand link building, even people that have digital. Uh, for yeah. instance, a lot of VCs' websites are very badly done. For instance, the Cambridge Analytica. Um, and the, of course, there was as well a component of getting data and taking data from websites in the case of Cambridge yeah. Analytica. But for instance, if you look at the Panama Papers, it was mostly yeah. because the website was created in WordPress 
And it was a very simple website to hack. And this was, we're talking about hundreds of companies or thousands of companies that had uh, offshore. They, the legal, they were not doing anything wrong, ironically. Yeah. So it's just these kind of things that are quite important. So from a, a deal, due diligence and from your experience as well, building uh, websites and from uh, you have as well the Understanding SEO course, tell us yep. a bit about what would be the... Um, because for instance, some of the things I like about what you've been doing is SEO for entrepreneurs. You have uh, understanding SEO course. So tell us about of these things because I always like people to listen to this podcast to learn and make sure yeah. that they don't get out of this. They take something interesting for their own business, personalities, and careers. Yeah. So um, I think we we're talking about backlinks, but now I'm going to tell you about this course, but also about backlinks at the same time. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I want to touch. So the 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 reason I'm talking about the SEO for entrepreneurs is, is because when I talk about backlinks, is very technical. Yes. And I want to put this in the context of the courses that you're doing. Sorry. Okay. Let me rephrase yeah. the question. Okay. So yes, I have a free course called Understanding SEO. And the goal with that course is anybody who takes it, whether you know anything about SEO or not, it's easy to understand anybody can understand it um i i do the old what's the old adage of like write it so simple that a 12 year old can understand understand it or a seventh grader or something like that like that's how i filmed all these tutorials um and it's just it teaches you everything you need to know from like what is a title tag what is a meta description like all of these things are very simple once you see it i show you examples we go through heading tags we go through images what is alt text what is like uh, internal links, external links, what are backlinks, all those things, people confuse them all the time, but I explain them very simple, uh, simply. Um, so essentially, I'll just go through what a backlink is, because we were just talking about it. A backlink is a link from another website that does not belong to you back to your website. So website A that you don't own is linking to your website B um, through a resource. So they're saying, hey, I really like the content that you know, your business wrote, I'm going to link to that because I want to share that with my readers, or I want to reference a, a stat or a number that you link to. I feel like I'm not explaining this as simple as uh, I would be if I had a graph in front of me, A and B websites. But um, yeah, if you want to learn more, it's understanding SEO, it's, you know, it's free. Sign up. Oh, that's it. That. No, no, I understand that all of these will put the links, and that's why I'm going through some of the questions because I want to. I know that you have one thing that probably I'm more complicated looking at topics. You're very straightforward, which is a great one because yeah. you, you take you take all my layers. So let's look <laughs> at one of the articles that you recently wrote that I, I'm very interested to talk today is uh, using ChatGPT for SEO. So if you could yeah. synthesize the case study that you had, and of course we we'll put the link, I, I would like to attach that. Using ChatGPT for SEO, we have an article on our website called that? Yes, yes. Okay, um, so this is news to me because I have my staff and like part of what we do is we use our website to train our staff. So if they are using ChatGPT, if they're a new writer or like they're new to the team, we have them write articles that go on the Hey Tony website as practice. Obviously, we have an editor go through and make sure everything's good um, and everything's accurate and fact check and all that kind of stuff. So the information is good there. It is helpful. Um, but I honestly don't have time in the day to read everything. So what I'm thinking that article is about is how good ChatGPT is and how it is actually effective to help you rank on Google um, if you're using it to write content as long as you're editing it. That's I think that's a summary of the article. And if my team wrote anything different, I'm going to be pissed. No, no, no. It's just a, it's a, <laughs> an interesting one, and I think it's it's an important one how you look at it because increasingly people are right now there's over 100 million people using ChatGPT every day, and, and at the moment yeah. is becoming increasing. I would say there is another search engine just using AI more advanced, but uh, and that you can chat. So uh, as a wrap up, so um, and I know that you passed one hour, so it's fast, and we went through yeah. different parts. So so let let's look at uh, so the uh, you're very synthetic, so that's great. So <laughs> what would be the the biggest challenges and opportunities you see on the SEO industry, especially for entrepreneurs and for personalities? Because my my of course my audience is not just the SEO agencies and SEO yeah. gigs, so it's more personalities on business and technology. I think the biggest thing is going to come with people using AI to write content and create images and all that kind of stuff, which like 
it is helpful and it can be helpful, but people, and I've seen this with real estate agents already, they are publishing, you know, five blog posts every single day and expecting to rank higher on Google. And I'm like, that's not how it's going to work. So, um, I'm trying to remember how you phrased the question, but essentially, yeah, sorry. I can't even remember how you phrased the question. I can repeat, Norris. So, so in terms yeah. of what I was saying is that how do you see the main challenge of Sorry, uh, yeah. SEO for businesses and companies when it comes to, uh, well, challenge and opportunities as well? Yeah. So again, yeah, the challenges with businesses is that now we have the opportunity to write content, but we don't have the necessarily like technical know-how to make sure that content's good, that's going to rank. So people are going to spend a lot of time and waste a lot of time publishing content without optimizing it, without using the proper tags, without necessarily even making sure that it's helpful. They're going to read it and be like, this is much better than I could ever write, but that doesn't mean it's good content. Um, the opportunities do lie where people are, or businesses or personalities are actually going to understand how to do SEO. They're going to take a course, not mine, not, or not necessarily mine. They're going to learn about SEO somewhere on the internet. They're going to learn what they need to do. They're going to use AI to their advantage as, you know, as a partner, as a writing partner, um, and not as like a, a hired out staff. They're going to use AI as a writing partner, and they're going to be able to publish much better content more frequently. And that's, that's the real opportunity there. So it's a great, uh tip for everyone listening to us so as the last one so how people can find you we'll put all these links but a bit more where they can engage i know that you're very active but the channels that you want to highlight for people to engage with you oh yeah instagram TikTok. you can find me on there you type in i think it's just matt diamante um or hey tony agency you'll find me you if you're watching this you'll see my face it's literally like my face is on every single video um so if you Go to a profile and it's not that that's not me um and yeah if you want to learn more about the services we offer hey tony.ca that's our main page if you want to take any of the courses free courses whatever uh just go to learn.heytony.ca again that's going to be in the i'm like i feel like i'm filming a video that's going to be in the description below the video so you know like the video the whatever all this stuff and uh yeah in the description <laughs> fantastic no, and yeah. it will be, definitely will be. Excellent. So, uh, <laughs> Matt, uh, i very excited and thank you so much for this. I know that I went through a lot of uh, open doors and that's the yeah. idea of this channel is going through these doors and, and keep a bit of the confusion that is in the world. So for people listening to us, I could only advise actually, I think Matt has a fantastic way of synthesizing things and go directly to the point, which is not probably something that I need to learn myself. Uh, so <laughs> I always like to learn and improve. So please learn, get into this SEO. It continues being super relevant for us. It's a multi-billion dollars industry. And uh, it's not just about the industry. It's super useful for all of us. So yeah. thank you, Matt, uh, for your fantastic time and for great insights. And I wish you awesome. great success for your business. Thank you.